Dr. Rhonda Patrick here. In my last video and accompanying article, I discussed growth hormone and IGF-1 and their performance longevity trade-off. On the one hand, as a downstream mediator of growth hormone, IGF-1 has many positive effects associated with youth, such as decreasing fat while increasing lean muscle mass, increasing verbal memory, and increasing neurogenesis, the growth of new brain cells. On the other hand, mice, worms, and flies that are genetically engineered to have high levels of growth hormone or IGF-1 have substantially shortened lifespans. Heat acclimation through sauna use, a term that I call hyperthermic conditioning, can help achieve and give you many of those positive effects associated with IGF-1 without the risk of high levels of growth hormone. Can induce physiological adaptations that can help improve your endurance performance and the acquisition of muscle mass. Heat acclimation increases the blood flow to your skeletal muscles. This increases glucose, esterified fatty acids, and oxygen to your skeletal muscles. Heat acclimation increases blood flow to the heart. This lowers cardiovascular strain and lowers the heart rate for the same given exercise workload. These things allow physical activity to be maintained for a longer period of time as compared to not being heat acclimated. It also releases norepinephrine, which is a vasodilator among other things, and allows for heat to be dissipated more efficiently. In one study, male runners engaged in a 30 minute sauna session two times a week after their workout. These runners were able to increase their running until exhaustion by 32%, and they experienced an accompanied 7% increase in plasma volume and 3.5% increase in red blood cell count. Heat acclimation through sauna use can also have positive effects on muscle hypertrophy. Exercise is a well-known inducer of muscle hypertrophy because it increases net protein synthesis, but unfortunately it also has to combat the effects of oxidative stress, which increases protein degradation at the same time. So anything that can combat oxidative stress during exercise will result in a net increase in protein synthesis and thus muscle hypertrophy. There are three ways that being heat acclimated can increase muscle hypertrophy. First is through the induction of heat shock proteins. Second is by boosting growth hormone levels. And third is by improving insulin sensitivity. This robust induction of heat shock proteins upon heat exposure is a prime example of hormesis. Heat shock proteins are able to repair damaged proteins and prevent protein oxidation by scavenging free radicals and by increasing endogenous antioxidants in our body, such as glutathione. And this is how they are able to cause a net increase in protein synthesis. In one study in rats, hyperthermic conditioning resulted in a robust induction of heat shock proteins, and this correlated with 30% more muscle regrowth compared to controls. The second way heat acclimation affects muscle hypertrophy is through the release of growth hormone. But what's not well known is that the sauna also affects growth hormone levels. For example, two 20 minute sauna sessions a day at 80 degrees Celsius can result in a twofold increase in growth hormone levels over baseline. Two one hour a day sauna sessions at 80 degrees Celsius for seven days in a row resulted in a 16 fold increase in growth hormone levels over baseline in men way in which heat acclimation can promote muscle growth is by improving insulin sensitivity. Insulin is anabolic because it decreases protein degradation. What's also interesting is that heat stress, which is known to boost growth hormone levels in humans, has been shown in flies and worms to cause about a 15% increase in lifespan. Now this is counter to what you might expect if you watched my last video on the performance longevity trade-off. The reason for this is that heat stress induces hormesis, and that causes the increase in expression in genes and proteins, such as heat shock proteins, that are known to improve longevity. Intermittent heat exposure and heat acclimation also have positive benefits on the brain. These positive benefits include increased neurogenesis, improved learning and memory, and improved focus. Sauna-induced hyperthermia also has a profound effect on norepinephrine and prolactin levels. In one study, individuals that stayed in the sauna until exhaustion had a 310% increase in norepinephrine and a tenfold increase in prolactin levels. 
Norepinephrine helps with focus and attention, and prolactin is important for myelin growth. Myelin increases the efficiency of the electrical activity in your brain and is also important for repairing nerve cell damage. Heat stress also increases neurogenesis. Hyperthermia, in conjunction with exercise, increases the expression of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF. BDNF has also been shown to decrease depression and anxiety associated with early life stressful events. And if that weren't enough, BDNF can also be released from your muscle cells where it promotes muscle repair and the growth of new muscle tissue. Ever wonder what's responsible for the runner's high or the post-exercise high in general? You may think it's due to the release of endorphins, but that's not the whole story. Hyperthermia from sauna use increases dynorphin levels and subsequently endorphin levels even more than exercise alone. Did you retain all that awesomeness I just threw at you? Okay, let's have a quick recap time.